How does a tourist helicopter from New York simply fall out of the sky? The accident footage gives us a lot of answers, and it might point to a common problem amongst most helicopters. The helicopter is a jet turbine powered Bell 206, which is a very common passenger helicopter. This particular helicopter was used to give tourists an unforgettable experience of the New York skyline. The tourists on board was Augustin Escobar, his wife, and their three children. Escobar was the CEO of the Spanish division of the technology company Siemens. Siemens is a massive conglomerate that has its hands in pretty much every aspect of technology. They had reportedly just arrived earlier that day to New York on vacation and decided to take a helicopter ride. The flight started at the downtown Manhattan heliport before getting up close and personal with the Statue of Liberty. From there it climbed and turned northbound up the Hudson River. There is footage online purporting to show that the helicopter is acting erratically. However, that footage isn't even of the same model of helicopter and it's not clear if that was on the same day or even in the same location. The GPS tracking information, on the other hand, shows that this was a completely normal tourist flight up the Hudson River. The pilot made several radio calls along the journey indicating that they were at appropriate altitude and location. All Ranger, being the Trevor southbound 900. All Ranger, Lincoln Tunnel southbound 1.0. Long Ranger, Steven, southbound 900. In congested airspace where there's no air traffic control, it's common for pilots to make radio calls with only their aircraft type and not their call sign, as this is much more useful to other pilots. At no time during the radio calls was anything ever amiss. Just as the helicopter is passing the Holland Tunnel, it fell out of the sky. There were no other aircraft in the area at the time, but in that video, there are some crucial details that can give us some insight into what might have happened. The first thing we might notice is that the helicopter is upside down with no tail boom. The engine mount also appears to be missing. In the other side of the frame, you can see what appears to be the rotors and gearbox still spinning. Two other videos taken from another angle show just how long these rotors kept flying. But that begs the question, how can the main rotors and the tail separate from the aircraft at the same time. But to understand that, we first need to know a little bit about how a helicopter's main rotor system works. Many helicopters, including the Bell 206, use a semi-articulated mast system. The design features a hub attached to a pivot. This allows for the main rotors to tilt semi-independently of the main aircraft body. This is a very useful property for maneuverability. To accelerate, the rearward rotor blades produce more lift, causing the rotors to tilt forward. When they're tilted forward, some of the lift is used as thrust, causing the helicopter to accelerate. With the helicopter accelerating and the body mainly hanging from the main rotors, it'll tend to tilt forward as well to match the rotor blades. In normal flight, this happens smoothly and nearly imperceptibly. There are a lot of other deep complexities around a helicopter's flight systems, but this is enough to understand what might have caused this crash. There is a condition helicopters like this can get into called mast bumping. This happens when these rotors hit their maximum possible tilt angle. That is, the helicopter's hub bumps into the mast. In normal flight, this should never happen. While helicopter designers usually include a tolerance to prevent the rotors from hitting the tail, there's still another catch. Normally, when a helicopter's blades are under load, they will tend to bend upwards, but in some circumstances, such as in rough air, those blades could end up bending downwards. With mass bumping occurring and the blades bending downwards, they can impact the tail, severing it. With that amount of impact, there's certainly enough force to dislodge the engine from the rest of the aircraft. And from there, the rest is history. But what causes mast bumping? One cause is severe turbulence. If air is moving vertically faster on one side than the other, it can cause the rotors to tilt uncontrolled. But the weather on that day wasn't particularly bad, meaning this isn't likely the cause. Mast bumping can also occur from various types of pilot inputs, especially aggressive inputs. For instance, if the pilot pushes the cyclic all the way to one direction, it can cause mast bumping. But why might the pilot be applying aggressive inputs? There were no other aircraft in the area, but what if there were birds? We all remember the miracle on the Hudson, where Sully Sullenberger landed his Airbus on the Hudson River after striking a flock of geese. Right now is a migratory period for many birds who would be passing through the New York area. The footage we have right now is too grainy to tell, but it is a possibility. Another question that people have asked is why the helicopter didn't sink after hitting the water. This particular helicopter and many other tourist helicopters in the New York area are equipped with a flotation system on their skids. These allow helicopters with engine problems to land softly on the water. Some of these systems are even able to automatically deploy. In some of the footage from after the accident, you can see these bags inflated. Despite the helicopter going down in such a busy area, none of the other air traffic saw the accident. The police and air traffic control called out on the frequency asking for other pilots to keep an eye out for the downed aircraft. Flight helicopter to river traffic. Any reports of an aircraft down Hudson River? Not that we've heard of. Alright, be advised, we got reports 
multiple calls by aircraft down, possibly to 26. Please uh, keep it advised. We're in route right now, Prospect Park. We'll be in sight. We'll be heading up north, uh, up the Hudson. We can inform you on anything we see. Find us where was that? Be advised, we're going to report possible aircraft down, Pier 26, Hudson River. Please keep your eyes open, guys. All right, we're looking. Roger. Pier 26 is close to what one? All right, river traffic, be advised, we got a, uh, we got a fire helicopter on station, Holland Tunnel, 500 and below. River traffic, a fire helicopter, Holland Tunnel, 300 on station. Fire helicopter, river traffic, be advised, you do have an aircraft down, Holland Tunnel, please keep your eyes open for anybody in the water. You got a tail number? Say again? You got a tail number? Negative, we do have one uh, confirmed aircraft in the water, we'll take a 206, please keep your eyes open, you guys see anything in the water, please let us know. Alright, we're just circling over Holland now. Hey, Finest, do you know what's going on over there by the Holland Hill? The ship went down. Uh, okay, it's, uh, it's one of my company. Is that Naya? It's New York helicopter. Uh, well, he said he blew the floats. I haven't seen it yet. Looks like it was okay. Uh, okay. Did you see people out of the ship? I'll, uh, give you a heads up in a moment. Uh, I'm still at the link in here. I'll be there in about a minute. Okay, sounds good. Air traffic got helicopter traffic. Finding this north of the Holland Tunnel, 700 for 1,000. Climbing. I can't really make it out. It's behind the boat. Yes, it's in the water. There's a bunch of people on the pier, and there's a boat right next to it. But, uh, I believe they pulled them out. It looks like the floats are blown. Negative. No, it's not. Right side up. Oh, no. We know now that there were no survivors. I'll be keeping my eye on this one and providing future updates.